Now let's learn about thermal comfort, indoor air quality, and heating and cooling. Beginning with thermal comfort, the amount of heat or cold that a building gains or loses depends greatly on what the building envelope is constructed with and how it's constructed. Each layer contributes to the building's resistance. Thermal bridges are elements that conduct heat quickly, such as framing members, metal, and masonry. Designing a building for the maximum amount of thermal resistance results in the best body comfort and the most energy conservation. When we are able to maintain a normal body temperature, we achieve thermal comfort. Interior designers should be very good at manipulating the psychological factors that affect thermal comfort by working with color, texture, light, and movement and pattern. Radiating heat are moving electromagnetic waves. There are three properties. The first is called reflectance, the amount of incoming radiation that bounces off a material and not altering the temperature of the surface. New white paint will reflect 75% of the radiation that hits it. The second is called absorptance, and that's the amount of incoming radiation that is absorbed by a material and raises its temperature, like the sun shining on a stone. Grass absorbs 94% of the radiation that hits it. Emittance is once the rock has absorbed the radiation, it will release it into the cooler air at night. Emittance, emittance is the ability of a material to radiate stored heat outward to cooler objects away from it. Now other types of heat transfer include conduction, which is the flow of heat from one solid material to another, convection, which is um, when a solid object will pick up uh, warmth or coolness from a stream of air. And evaporation, when there's a cooling effect because water is evaporating off of a surface of an object. Okay, on to some more thermal stuff. Now, thermal capacity is the ability of a material to store heat, and it's roughly proportionate to its mass. So, dense material will hold heat um, will hold a lot of heat and fluffy materials will not hold a lot of heat. Water actually has the highest thermal capacity at ordinary air temperatures and is the reason that water can actually control the surrounding temperatures of an area. Now objects of high thermal mass heat up more slowly and hold heat for longer periods of time. They also have a low thermal resistance meaning that when heat is applied to one side of the material It'll move very quickly to the cooler side and heat it until an even temperature is reached. Materials uh, that have a high thermal mass are brick, stone, concrete, earth, metals, and plaster. Fabrics and insulating materials have a low thermal capacity since they are designed to not allow heat to pass through them. Thermal conductivity refers to how fast heat will flow through a material. So, Steel feels colder than wood to the touch because heat is conducted away from our skin very quickly. This allows a designer to specify materials that will either give feelings of warmth or coolness. Conductivity is the measure of the rate at which heat will flow through a material. And finally, thermal resistance is basically when there's a limited amount of air movement, the wall surface will retain an insulating layer of air lowering the energy loss from the building envelope. Air is the best resistor to heat flow found in buildings. Other, there's other types of things that will uh, create thermal resistance as well, and we call those insulation. Now, R values measure the thermal resistance of a material. A unit of thermal resistance used for comparing insulating values of different materials. The higher the R value of a material, the greater its insulating properties, and the slower the heat will flow through it. Now there are various types of insulation on the market. The first one is called loose fill, and this is basically made of mineral fibers or other treated cellulose fibers that's just sort of dumped in uh, a cavity in the wall. Foamed in place or poured in place insulation is a liquid fiber mixture that's poured in place and 
Uh, they also have a green foam, foam alternative that's appropriate for more chemically sensitive people. Flexible or semi-rigid insulation is available in bats and blankets, and it's made of glass or mineral wool. And then rigid insulation is, comes in blocks, boards, or sheets, and it's made of plastic or cellular glass. Now that's it for thermal comfort. Take a look at the next video on indoor air quality.